We're going to explore how to do the derivative of a product of two different functions because it's nothing like you would expect. So we're going to take a look at the, the product rule. The product rule. And before we get into the product rule, I want to take a second to remind you of some basic derivatives of arithmetic operators. So uh, just to remind you, if you take the derivative of a constant times a function, that's the same thing as taking the constant out and multiplying it by the derivative of just the, the function itself. Okay. It's also true that if you take the derivative of a sum of two functions, then you can, you can take the derivative of each function independently and then add those derivatives together. So we take the derivative of the first function, f of x, and then add it to the derivative of the second function, g of x. Okay? And there's, there's nothing terribly unique about a sum here. You could also have a difference. So you could have a subtraction here, which would mean there would be a subtraction there. And so these, these derivative properties are pretty easy to use. Derivative played nicely with constant multiples and sums and differences. However, if you have the derivative of f of x times g of x, unfortunately, you can't take the derivative of f times the derivative of g. And that's what this video is all about. How do you do that derivative? So, so we're going to write the product rule here. So the product rule says, if you take the derivative of a product of functions, so you've got f of x times g of x, here's how you do it. Well, there's, there's several ways to think of this, but um, you take the first function, f of x, if you want to call it f of x, but really what I want to do is think of this as the first function and this is the second function. That's how we'll refer to them. f and g are arbitrary labels, okay? So we take the first function and we multiply it by the derivative of the second function. So the first function, as is, multiplied by the derivative of the second function. Plus, plus, don't forget that, now we take the derivative of the first function, and we multiply that derivative by the second function as it is. Okay? Now, you can see each of the summands in this sum incorporates both the first and second function, right? You've got f and g here, you've got f and g here, and then those are added, and within each summand, you have one of the functions as is multiplied by the derivative of the other function. So here we have f times the derivative of g, so that means over here we need the derivative of f multiplied by g. Now the good thing is about this is that multiplication is what we call commutative. So it really doesn't matter what order you multiply these, you could take the derivative of the second function and then multiply it by the first function. And the same goes with this multiplication. Similarly, a sum is commutative. So you could also switch the way you add this summand to this summand. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. All kinds of different ways to write this. So I will, I will fluidly go back and forth with just switching the order of things here because you can multiply in any order you want. You can add in any order that you want. So I just want to lay that on the line here first. But this, this is the product rule. And I'm not going to prove it in this video. Uh, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit hard to follow. Uh, maybe one day I'll put up a proof, but for now I just want to make sure we understand, uh, understand the rule. Now, uh, sometimes we put little sayings with these rules to help us remember them. And so lots of times what we'll say here is we'll do, we'll say we take the first times the derivative of the second. So maybe I'll put a prime here for derivative of the second. So first times derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. Okay? Let's write it like this. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. 
Um, and I will often interchange the order that I do these in. Okay, so let's let's get into an example where this could be could be useful to us. So let's say, let's say that we want to differentiate. Remember what differentiate means. It means take the derivative of. Let's say I want to differentiate the function f of x equals 2x times e to the x. Okay. And clearly, we have more than just a constant multiple. I've got a constant multiple because I've got this coefficient of 2. But I've got a function of x times another function of x. So what we need to do is, because this is a product and I want to differentiate, I need to maybe assign labels of first and second to kind of help us understand the idea here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my 2x my first, my first factor of the product. And the e to the x, I'll call my second factor. So this is like my f of x and my g of x. Now, it's okay to absorb the constant coefficient in front of x here as part of my first because we know how to differentiate with a, with a coefficient as we described before. So, so here we go. If I want to differentiate this, I would call it f prime of x. And I'm going to show you all the notation using Leibniz notation here first. And we'll move away from that quickly uh, because we should be comfortable differentiating polynomials or powers and exp natural exponential functions and constants. So we'll quickly move away from all of this detailed work, understanding that if you need to write it on future examples, you should go for it. But here we go. So the first thing I want to do is recite, recite the, the product rule, since this is a product. I'm going to take the first function, which is 2x, and I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of the second function, which is e to the x. Okay, so my first function times the derivative of my second, and then plus the derivative of my first function, so the derivative of 2x, times my second function, which is e to the x. So this, this is a good way to start with the product rule. Get used to writing it out. Now, because I've got my d dx here, that means I still need to take the derivatives of these functions. So that's what we're going to do now. I've got 2x times, well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So I get 2x e to the x plus the derivative of 2x, well, that's just 2, right? If you use the power rule, you can see that you just get a derivative of 2. And then I drop, I drop down my e to the x. So f prime of x, so f prime of x equals 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. Okay? And just to remind you what this means, this is the formula for calculating the slope of the tangent line to the f function for any x value. Okay? So this would help you find the slope of the tangent line to the f function up here. All right? Let's, uh, let's take this a step further. Now that we know f prime of x, why don't we try, why don't we determine, why not, right? Let's try to determine f double prime, f double prime of x. So now what we're going to do is we need to differentiate this guy, okay? So let me, let me write, let me recopy f prime of x here which is 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. So if I want f double prime of x, then I have to take the derivative of all of this. The good news is this is a sum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this guy, differentiate this guy, and then add them together. Okay, so I'm going to copy my, my plus here. That's my big plus. And 
I need to differentiate this, 2x e to the x. Well, notice that 2x e to the x is a product. So if I want to differentiate that, I have to do the product rule. Okay. Um, now, we're going to expedite this process because what I'm noticing is that 2x e to the x is the same function we started with, and we already know its derivative, right? The derivative of this guy is all of this, right? 2x e to the x, when we differentiate, we got this. So this 2x e to the x is going to turn into 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. So when I differentiate that product, I get all of this. Now I need to differentiate 2 e to the x. Luckily for us, that's just a coefficient times e to the x. Well, so I copy my coefficient and I multiply by the derivative of e to the x, which happens to be e to the x. And so here, so here we go. So here is f double prime of x. I could simplify it a little bit. So I've got 2x e to the x. And I've got 2e to the x plus another 2e to the x, giving us 4e to the x. So f double prime of x equals 2x e to the x plus 4e to the x. And so now, here's the formula for the slope of the tangent line to the f prime function, the derivative function. And, and we'll get more into higher derivatives later on and what they mean and how to use them. But for now, understand, we could, we could keep replicating this process of uh, the derivative to get f triple prime, the third derivative, and the fourth derivative, etc. In fact, maybe there's a pattern here. There, you might explore that on your own. Uh, notice f, f prime of, so f of x has 2x e to the x. f prime of x has 2x e to the x plus some more stuff. f double prime of x has 2x e to the x plus some more stuff. And there might be a pattern with this, with this e to the x term here. Uh, you, may be, you might be hypothesizing, like I am right now, what it might be, but certainly explore that, play around with it, and see what you find. Now let's see, let's see another application where we actually do stuff with the tangent line using the product rule to find the derivative. And it's pretty cold in my garage tonight, so my standard eraser just won't cut it. I have to use the rag. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Let's try... Um, <clears throat> Let's, let's do one more example before we get into the tangent line stuff. I'm, I'm looking at my examples that I have planned here. Let's, let's try one where we use different variables and different notation, just so we're practicing constant with, constantly with all the variations. So let's try to determine dy dz if y equals 1 plus e to the z times the quantity z squared plus 3e e to the z. Okay, that's an interesting function. And so now, I didn't use the word differentiate, but I said determine dy dz, which means find the derivative of the y function, which we have here, with respect to z as our variable. So we're treating z as the variable, and it can be tricky when you've got e's mixed in, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with e, e is not a variable, e is a constant. So keep that in mind here. And so there's a couple ways you could do the derivative. In the context of the product rule video, you probably will look at this and say, well, I've got this quantity times this quantity. So I certainly have a product. And so if I apply the product rule, this would be my first function of z, and this would be my second function of z, and we could proceed. So that's certainly, that's probably what I'll end up doing. Another way to do it is before you differentiate, get rid of the parentheses. So you could FOIL this out, you could distribute all of this out, and then you'd have a sum of four terms probably, unless there were like terms, I don't think there are, but you'd have four terms added together, 
and then you would differentiate each of those independently, probably having to use the product rule along the way. Okay, so let's, let's go with method one just because um, we're emphasizing the product rule. So dy dz, and so I'm going to leave behind the notation from before, and I'm just going to do the derivatives as I encounter them. So what I mean by that is, so this is going to be my first, the first part of my product, and this is going to be my second part of my product. So I'm going to take my first function, 1 plus e to the z, times the derivative of my second function. So rather than writing d dz of this, I'm actually just going to go ahead and do the derivative because it's simple to do. When you encounter more difficult derivatives, you might write d dz and then do the derivative in steps. But here, the derivative of z squared is just 2z plus the derivative of 3e to the z is 3e to the z. And remember, I can do the derivative of those independently because there's a sum, and we can do that with sums. So this is the first times the derivative of the second, plus I need to do the derivative of the first and multiply it by the second. So we need the derivative of this guy. Well, the derivative of the first, well, the derivative of one is just zero. One's a constant, its derivative is zero, so I'm not going to write that down. Zero plus the derivative of e to the z, that's just e to the z. So when I differentiate my first factor of my product, I just get e to the z. Okay? Times, so I've got the derivative of the first, I need to multiply it by the second as is. Okay? And at this point, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our parentheses and combine like terms. All right, just for, just for some practice here. So I'm going to distribute my 1. So I get 2z plus 3e to the z. And I'll distribute my e to the z, giving me 2z e to the z plus 3 plus 3 e to the 2z, right? e to the z times e to the z, you add the exponents, z plus z gives you e to the 2z. So that's what I get when I distribute all of this, plus let's distribute this, e to the z. So this gives us z squared, e to the z, and this gives us 3, 3e three to the 2z. Okay? And then we'll combine like terms to sort of clean it all up and wrap it up. So I've got a 2z term. I don't have any other z term. I've got a 3e to the z, and I don't have any other e to the z terms. This is a z e to the z term, so that's not a like term. And let's see. Okay. So 3e to the z. Here I've got a z e to the z, and I don't have any more of those. So that's 2z e to the z. Plus, I've got a 3e to the 2z and another 3e to the 2z. So those are going to give me 6e to the 2z. And last, I have z squared e to the z. Okay? And so that is, that is the derivative of this function y with respect to the variable z. If you distributed first and differentiated, you would still get the same answer exactly. Okay, so you could try that out if you want some more practice. Okay, now let's do something with the, with the tangent line involving the product rule. So let's determine the equation. Determine the equation of the line. Determine the equation of the line tangent to. Let me see what my function is. So 
So my function is that f of x equals 2x e to the x. Sorry, 2x e to the x. It's that same function we looked at before. At the point 0, 0. Okay? So I want the equation of the tangent line to this function at 0, 0. And so if I want the equation of the tangent line, we're looking for y equals mx plus b. Okay? And so the first thing we're going to do is find m, which is the slope of the tangent line. So we know that m is going to be the slope of the tangent line to this function. So in other words, that's f prime. It's the derivative of that function. And the slope is going to be the derivative at the x value of 0. So it's f prime of 0. So I need to know what f prime of 0 is. To do that, I'm going to figure out f prime of x, the generic formula for the, for the derivative function. And then once I get my formula, I can plug 0 in for x to get the, the numeric slope value. So f prime of x from before, right, we already did this derivative, is going to be 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. Okay? And so now I can see that, okay, well, this is f prime of x is this, so m is going to be f prime of 0, which is what I get when I plug 0 into this guy. So that's going to be 2 times 0 times e to the 0 plus 2 times e to the 0. Well, because I've got a factor of 0 in here, all of this goes to 0. e to the 0 is 1, so I've got 2 times 1, which is 2. So I know that, I know that m is 2, right? And because I have a point here where x sub 1 equals 0 and y sub 1 equals 0 as well, I can use my point slope. I can use my point slope formula to get the equation of the line. So y minus y sub 1, 0, equals m, which is 2, times x minus x sub 1, which is also 0. And if we simplify this so that y is by itself to be in slope-intercept form, I get y, because y minus 0 is y, equals 2 times x. So this is the equation of the line tangent to uh, this function at this point. So if you were to graph this curve and look at the tangent line, this is what it would be, have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 0 at this point. Okay? So this derivative idea now gets really quick uh, when you know all the rules for derivatives as opposed to having to use limits to find the derivative.